start the meeting. You want to... Okay. Uh, do you want to do a countdown, of Scott, or are we good? Okay. Okay. Alex, you think everything's good? I think so. All right. All right. Good evening. It's August 5th, uh, 2021. It's about six after six. Um, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Adam Sokolowski, Chairman. And I will call the meeting to order. Anybody have any objections to that? When we do, we'll let you know. Well, Mr. Decker, I wouldn't want you to hold back. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to skip over items two and three on our agenda for right now and four, and we're going to move to uh, the public hearing, which is number five. I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing for Treehouse oh. Brewing Company. Oh. Okay. Can Second. I have seconded? Uh, Alex, do we still need to say our names for the recording? Is that helping you with the minutes? Uh, yes. Okay. Good so question. the motion was made by Mr. Decker to open the public hearing and seconded by Mr. Sadowski. The uh, Treehouse Brewing Company is uh, seeking an amendment to a special permit for property located at number one community place. Map 150 lot nine for additional phase two uses referenced in the project narrative as allowed by the zoning bylaw chapter 179 section 2230. Um, public comment is encouraged by email and writing. Um, and we also have a chance for some public comment uh, this evening. Um, right now the applicant is present and um, we'll go ahead and have a roll call vote uh, for everybody to open the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Sadowski? Yes. Uh, Mr. Potter? Yes. Okay, Alex? Yes. And Ms. Remillard? Yes. Okay. Council? Good evening. Um, is this on? Just to make sure we're all good in technical side. Great, super, thank you. Uh, so, for the record, Mark Borenstein, an attorney at the law firm of Baddock and Dewey in Worcester, uh, representing Triage Brewing Company, Inc. Um, it's wonderful to be with you in person. Uh, last time for phase one, we were obviously remote, so it's nice to see all of you in person. Um, just to uh, orient folks, um, you have the materials, you've had a chance to review them, but uh, since we were last before you, um, Triage has commenced phase one of, of the operations in Deerfield. They've commenced uh, some of the initial interior improvements to facilitate the brewery operations. Um, they've commenced uh, their sales uh, within the building uh, for folks for off-premises consumption, which has been great. Uh, customers have really appreciated the opportunity to purchase their product from the Deerfield facility. And we're Triad's really excited to bring additional amenities to the site and additional um, services as part of phase two. So before you this evening is an application for the amendment to the special permit for major commercial projects. Um, as part of that uh, special permit, there is um, additional uses beyond that was, which was permitted part of phase one in the initial special permit grant. Um, if you'd like, I can quickly go through those, but I just wanna, before we get started on that, I just wanna make sure that we have the slideshow available. Give me one second. Okay, thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Takes a bit because it's a large file to upload it. So, gotcha. Well, so while okay. Jen's working on that, um, I'll just summarize the additional uses um, that are being proposed as part of phase two. Um, and this is all of the uses. So this would be phase one and phase two. So we have the brewery use, the warehouse warehousing of the alcoholic beverages, the offices use, uh, the retail sales, uh, retail, and as part of phase three, we're proposing retail sales within the building. We're also proposing a restaurant use with the consumption of alcohol on premises um, with, the, with the addition of uh, food trucks to supplement the restaurant operations. And I'll speak more to the restaurant, restaurant operations um, in a bit. Um, beer production classes, concert shows, coffee and baked goods, retail sales, um, winery, distillery, and cidery, and other types of production and accessory uses related there too. So this is really an expansion of the proposed use within the building to facilitate additional uses of, of the building itself. Um, we've appeared before the select board 
the select board has issued a, a pouring permit uh, or it has approved a pouring permit and it's now before the ABCC as part of Treehouse's proposed uh, restaurant operations at the property. Um, they've approved an entertainment license. We've appeared before the planning board and the planning board has uh, granted the approval of the site plan amendment. Um, in addition, we have submitted an application to the Board of Health for a common victual license as part of the restaurant establishment and that is also um, anticipated to be approved once the building uh, improvements have been made with respect to the kitchen. Um, uh, Treehouse's um, civil engineers are working with the different departments of the town and has received positive feedback from the proposal for, for phase two. Uh, so we got the slideshow now. Great. Thank you, Jen. Welcome. So, um, so those are the proposed uses and I'll speak to those more in depth, but I also just want to orient the board in terms of some of the site improvements that are being proposed. Um, some of the, the, the board members were able to attend a site visit today. Um, this is a, an, an aerial of, of the site and to orient the board, this is building A, this is building B, this is building C. I think that's, Jen, is that your cursor as well? That's mine because I, I yeah. put it up, so. Oh, okay. So, oh, if you're you, controlling, if, I'm not controlling. Right, do you want thought, Alex to, to pull it up? I just didn't want to interrupt, nope, so. No, that's okay, we'll, we'll keep okay. going, this is working. Let's go to the next slide. Super. So this is an aerial of the site improvements. And really there are four areas of site improvements um, that were approved uh, by the planning board as part of the site plan amendment. You'll see um, to the north, there's a slight modification to the, what was previously pr proposed as the portico area. There's now going to be an awning uh, in lieu of the portico. To the west, we've got um, a new porous pavement area, parking area. There'll be EV charging stations and additional accessible parking spaces. Um, to the east, you'll see there's a new um, pad for a recycling, um, uh, recycling dumpster. There'll be a new um, area for parking. There'll be additional parking area to the south that will be restriped. There'll be a slight expansion of the impervious surface um, right next to building C that will allow for a shuttle that will start in the parking area to the north and take folks down um, to allow for more accessible entry to, to building C. Um, in addition, there are walkways that are going to provide for uh, accessible entry uh, for patrons to, to enter uh, Building C. So, so those, are, those are the site improvements themselves, um, just so everyone's aware. If we go just to the next couple of slides, Jen, because those are just the additional improvements. I want to get to the actual layout of the building, the interior. Super. All right, so this is building A, not much is occurring here. There's some slight modifications to the portico and the awning, like I said before, and some slight modifications to the doors and the uh, vestibule there. Next slide, please, Jen. And this was all built out as part of the phase one operation. So the next slide here. So this is, uh, this is part of, this is building B. And so as part of phase two, there'll be retail sales in that first entryway. So if you've been in the building before, when the main entrance, that's where this particular retail sales will occur. And, there, and, and, and patrons will be directed to um, this more southerly on the slideshow area, this hallway, which will lead to building C. Keep going, Jen, yeah. please. Yeah. This is the, um, the most recent layout. Um, certain portions are, are, will, are, have been or will be demolished as part of the build out for phase, uh, for, for building C as part of phase two. Uh, there will be, uh, you'll see here, kind of hard to read it from this point, but um, certain walls will be removed. Um, areas will be, uh, will be demolished, thank you, Jen, to install new toilet rooms. Um, certain planters were removed. And if you go to the next slide, Jen, we'll give folks a better sense of what they've seen in the materials. So this is the layout of the restaurant area in building C. Um, you'll see uh, to the, if you look at the slideshow here, to the, to, to the east over here, the seating area. To the west, there's additional seating areas. There's a, uh, a tap center um, service counter um, to, to the north. There's a cooler as well. And then to the far east, you'll see uh, the kitchen area. And a lot of this is already existing. Um, but uh, the kitchen area will be able to service the proposed restaurant operations. So a little bit about the restaurant operations. Uh, Treehouse is installing a pizza oven. This is included in the materials, but um, just to provide some additional information, 
Um, as you're aware, the zoning bylaw requires for patrons to be served primarily seated. And so Treehouse will be facilitating that through the use of runners. Um, it's likely going to occur through a QR uh, scanning system, but uh, right now that's still being worked through in terms of internal processes. So patrons will be able to order food and beverages. Um, and just so everyone's aware, and I, I mentioned this to the, to the ZBA members that were able to attend the site visit, uh, you'll see here um, to the south there's a, a ramp for proposed accessibility. Uh, that is actually going to be changed to a lift. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Jen, we'll be able to see the lift. Great, thank you. So right there, you'll see that um, Treehouse will be installing a lift to um, promote accessibility. It, it, was a, it was a better fit in terms of um, providing um, accessible options for, for patrons. Um, there's also, um, I'd be remiss to not mention the auditorium in the interior. Um, that will provide uh, an opportunity for in, indoor entertainment. And then you have the exterior portions which you'll see the out, outside seating. Um, there's the amphitheater, which will allow for um, some live entertainment. Um, and, and to the south of the property, in the south lawn, there will be the proposed ticketed concerts. And so uh, in terms of the different, differences between the entertainment, there might be live entertainment when folks are having dinner or, or enjoying a beer, like you would see at most venues. And then for concerts, there would be ticketed events which would allow for, um, for more patrons to attend and enjoy the entertainment. You're good. I'm just going to turn the air conditioning up a little bit. Okay. Super. Um, so as part, of the, um, as part of the due diligence for the proposed concert, we, we received some, some questions from, um, from uh, members of the staff from the town of Deerfield. Uh, uh, Treehouse uh, engaged a sound engineer to visit the property. Um, they, they set up a full amplification system as if they were going to put on a traditional concert, and they measured the decibel levels. And so at the property itself, um, they were able, they tested a 93 decibels from the mix station in the center of the south field. And at the property line, they tested, they, 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 they registered 81 decibels. And what's interesting is they registered 81 decibels along the property line along 5 and 10, but they also registered 84 decibels with cars and trucks driving by. So the noise from the amplification system was actually less than cars and trucks driving by along the property line. They also measured noise at the veterinary clinic across 5 and 10 and the residential properties behind the property along the railroad tracks, and those registered 50. So they've, they've they, and there's, there's a report from the sound engineer um, documenting the, the, the results. Um, John, can you blow that up, please? Sure. I can't read it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, been submitted to the building inspector or anybody in town at this point? So the information has been submitted. We've verbally submitted, but we submitted the actual document itself today. That's my question. Yeah. And so generally, if you look at the zoning bylaw, there are certain provisions that are applicable to other zoning districts. So for example, um, there are performance standards for manufacturing uses, and there's also decibel standards for the expedited permitting district. And you'll notice that in that district, you're not allowed to have decibel levels at the boundary lines of 85 decibels. So what we registered with respect to noise at the boundary level was actually less than what's permitted in an expedited uh, permitting district. But this is a, not an expedited Understood. permitting district. Expedited permitting is off of Sugarloaf Street, the old officer property. Understood. And I, I'm just trying to explain how we were looking for direction in terms of decibel levels. In addition, uh, we were looking to the DEP regulations that speak to what type of decibels you should be looking for in terms of an amplification system. And generally, it's considered um, not a noise violation if you don't increase the noise 10 decibels at the property line. So given that we're seeing noise uh, from traffic at, 81 de at 84 decibels with music at 81 decibels, we're pretty much on par with what's already existing in terms of the road noise along 5 and 10. So I'm just providing some context in terms of what we build has been done by Treehouse to uh, estimate what impact, if any, related to, to the concerts. So those are, those are generally the uses. Um, if you'd like, I can specifically go through the special permit criteria. It's in the materials, but I'm happy to walk through it if, if the board would like. Members of the board, I've read it. I welcome to board's input before we start public comment. And, um, I'm sure Mr. Decker, they could facilitate it 
if you wanted to, but we're, when we're just over there, the noise Pelican puts off makes it, you can't even hear the traffic. My main focus is the noise level. What's, what the noise level is. Jonathan, can you face the board? The other, the other focus I have is the fact that Board of Selectmen has issued a permit for entertainment mm -hmm. for 365 days of the year. The exception of Sundays starts at roughly 10 o'clock and ends at 11 o'clock at night. I kind of feel that that's kind of excessive. Um, I like to see entertainment, but I, I don't want to see that much entertainment. Right? Sure. The no. point about it is, is I love to listen to music and what have you, but I don't know that the people in the town of Deerfield would want to listen to that type of music going on uh, on that number of hours. And are you having ticket events? Are you having more than one ticket event in the same day? Uh, so, so to be to be honest, we don't have a set plan in terms of what the concerts would be. Um, but generally, it's been Treehouse's operations that 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 they have one ticketed event at any given time, and it's usually you know, at least a week in between ticketed events. Okay, so you wouldn't be running one at noon and another one at 6 o'clock. That's not what's contemplated for phase two, correct. But if you were to sell property to somebody else at a later date, the person buying it or whoever buys the procedure uh, could run to that extent. I'm not saying you're going to do it, sure. but I'm just saying, no, no, no. Once this permit is issued, mm -hmm. it goes with the land, right? And well, unless we can decide to go with the applicant. That's correct. Yep. Well, we can do that. Yep. The applicant here is Treehouse. And right. It's a different person that owns the land. I understand that. Correct. But, but as the applicant, the applicant is seeking the relief. So you can make it specific to the applicant that leases the property. Yeah. So from my understanding that our of the tour that we just had and a question um, or a comment that was made was that annually that the entertainment license and music trawlers license and everything else is renewed, correct? Yeah, that's a, that's a board of selectmen. That's outside of our purview um, on what they do. Um, but from what we've learned over the past couple of years that this is the time that we can ask the applicant what they would would like to do for conditions if the board feels as though they wanted to restrict you know i think from what we've heard from what i've read and what treehouse does in charlton and i'll let the applicant speak to it i i know that they have broad latitude in their permit from the board of selectmen but we could narrow that latitude if the board felt to to narrow it an hour wise or a number of events per year or I don't think they're going to be putting people on the lawn in February, but maybe they could build a nice ice rink. I don't know, but um, you know, that's I think. There next week. Well, <laughs> at one time it was trail accessible, but um, you know, we'll see. But uh, I think that's uh, that's open everybody's input, and as well as the applicants' but further I'm input. Cautious that the way the structure with the permit that's been issued by the board of selectmen. Run with the exception of Sundays, they could start at 10 o'clock and go to 11. I well, I understand your concern, Mr. Decker. Um, Mr. Chair, have we received any? Well, I know that we're doing mail after, but I mean, have we received any comments from any of neighbors, the betters, regarding the concerns of the noise in the surrounding area from the performances? I have gone through everything here as well as my email. I'm going to check it again, and I have gotten no in writing public comment. Neither um, have I. Neither, neither is Jen as close of business today. So uh, I don't know if we want the applicant to continue and then take public comment. And uh, I think we should keep, keep going. If I can ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Um, at, at present, there are multiple aspects of phase two. Yes. And this is just one of them. This is just one of them, uh, yes. Right. 
get, it's a, it's a multi-dimensional use in terms of the building. Mm -hmm. Treehouse is trying to bring patrons to this space with lots of different amenities. So the concert is just one of many options. The, 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 the heart and soul of, of, of the business is the restaurant and the flooring on premises. Question. Yes, yes, sir. Say so you're getting a common bidder's license. Yes, sir. Um, now, are you going to be pouring liquor that's not distilled or brewed by you? No. No. So it'll only be stuff that's brewed in house on that site. Under Massachusetts law, it has to be beer that is produced by or for Treehouse. Maybe from different sites of yours? Correct. You're not going to be bringing in other people's beers. It's not permitted. It okay. violates Massachusetts law. And you're not going to be getting a regular liquor license or anything else to serve other types of liquors or liqueurs? So, so the application, the special permit application, provides for a brewery and a distillery use. So if Treehouse were to sell, if once Treehouse obtains, if, if this board sees fit to grant a special permit, it will apply for a TTB distillery permit so it can produce distilled spirits on the property for, for, for sale on and off premises consumption. And so it would be able to sell bottles to go, but also be able to sell um, spirits of mixed drinks for on premises consumption. And that would also require a state license it would also require an additional pouring permit from the select board. You'd be doing both pouring and, and a package still the equivalent of that. It, yeah, that's what's permitted under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 138, Section 19E. And you're also going to be putting a winery in this too? We are seeking approval for a winery. Um, yes. Yeah. And so the winery itself is a component of the uses. So under Massachusetts law, in order for you to, for any farmer, brewery, distillery, or winery to serve any products on premises, it has to be, like I said before, produced by or for that, by that business. So they can't go to the liquor store, they couldn't go to a wholesaler, for example, and purchase a third party type of alcohol and serve it on premises. That's the premises of this, on a different part of your site that you do at the later date? You're saying, could we sell? Well, you have 40 odd acres. Right. Say you decided to, to uh, set up a uh, some sort of a uh, venue on the north. So unfortunately, uh, as much as Treehouse would like to diversify their business operations, they can't do that under Master's Law. In order for them to sell any alcohol pouring on premises, it has to be licensed as a brewery, distillery, or a winery. So they can't set up a small stand and, and serve mixed drinks. Okay. Unless that whole property is licensed as such. Okay, my point is that there's five or six different parcels. Parcels. Correct. Right. I don't anticipate ever putting something out of another parcel further up where you would be seeking that type of license. Or would the permits when we issue are going to be encompass the whole 45 acres roughly? So, what I would say is that under Massachusetts law, um, so that, that's not being proposed as part of this application, but in, under Massachusetts law, Treehouse cannot hold a, a, a bar license separate from their brewery license. And if they were to seek any additional licenses, they would, one, need a pouring, additional pouring permits. So let's say they were to build a separate brewery structure, right? That would have to be completely relicensed under Massachusetts and federal law. You know, we're getting a little bit outside of the application, yeah, too. It's speculation here. It's a long running question because it's such a expensive piece of land. Well, I know. And I also know that the clock's ticking, so if members should keep it to the application in front of us and not worry about... I don't have any problem with the winery facility. Council, so continue. Yeah, uh, so th those are the extent of those are the extent of my comments. So I'm happy to address any specific questions that the board may have. Okay. Um, any board members uh, have any questions for uh, council, or do you want to uh, at this point move on to public comment? I see there's some people's hand raised. We have some people in the audience here. I have a question, Mr. Chair. Okay, go ahead. And recognize me. Yes. Um, the um, product you're going to produce. Are you going to, your product or your agricultural product going to come from your own business or are you going to uh, purchase those from other uh, agricultural areas? 
for example, you're going to make winery. You, you don't have your own uh, grapes. Right. Yeah. So you're going to purchase other. So Treehouse has um, a facility in Woodstock, Connecticut. It has a farm, its own farm. Um, it's, I, I don't know the specifics in terms of where they're going to source their materials, um, but I would suspect that they're very prideful about the product that they make, and they're going to source them from either their own farm or sustainable farms. So this isn't a what would they call farm dist uh, farm distillery or farm. Uh... This is a far this is a farmer distillery. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Members, like to be recognized. All two of the people here first. Anybody here? Joe Chesky. Can you go over to the mic, please? Yeah, you guys can snuggle right up there, sure. No, 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 don't move it. It's uh, There's a speaker right there. One question. What is the plan uh, with this concert venue for 500 folks? What's the, the, the way the, the concert venue is going to face? West, east? I see the decibel levels. I'm at 154 North Main Street. I've lived there since 62, so believe me, I'm Adam. You know, you know, oh yeah. Yeah. So I don't, 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 don't try and you know. I would say we, we yeah, I'll let like council. Uh, we we just we just walked it, mm -hmm. um, and um, it's going to be the presenters. If correct me if I'm wrong, or the are we going to face west? They're going to be they're going to be singing towards the animals getting worked on. So hopefully five and nine. It's going to be nine. facing west. Okay. Right. Okay. So the so the audience will be right. facing southeast. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at yeah. I'm concerned about a butters. Right. You know I'm just outside your butters, but to yeah. Be honest, I've I've heard it all. Right. You can hear you know trains everything else. In that you can area. hear the rumble that, strips. Right. You can hear that. You can hear it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point and mm -hmm. Bob's question when does this stuff start does it start at 10 in the morning go to 11 at night mm -hmm. just five days a week is this oh, one day a week you right know, in terms of a you know an event mm -hmm. um you know we have to be cognizant of that mm -hmm. i'm also hearing that there's an expedited expedited permit process in place well the and, town and, has, and i'll be yeah. honest with you let's face it when we were building the high school Mm -hmm. you know, with the football field, mm -hmm. with the lights coming in. And, and you, know, you can hear that, you, too. You, you knew the, the griping and all about that. Mm -hmm. So I just don't want this to become a steamroll. The other thing is, 39 years in banking, I know about financing for microbrews, mm -hmm. about distilleries. Mm -hmm. You give these guys all their permits, you know what the value of that property does. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I'm just looking at that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to protect not only myself, but I'm also trying to protect the abutters from mm -hmm. the noise. Excuse me. Just, excuse could, me. could you say what it does to the value of the property? You it goes up. Okay. Yeah. Commercial, it, right. it goes up exponentially. Yeah. 39 years of banking. I mean, this this is a no-brainer. Okay. Right. You know, so that, and, that's and, right. And, so that is to be clear. Yeah. You know, and, so and fine, you, give, you give them all this and fine. It's, it, if, if they've got the right to do that, that's great. But I'm just telling you. I mean, it's, it's advantageous for them. That's why and that's I mentioned earlier about a condition, and Mr. Koss is joining us tonight, and I'm going to ask him is how, if we, if the board chooses to grant this permit, then what would be some conditions that the board may want, and Thank you. that might be conditioning the permitting to the applicant only. They're not transferable permits, Thank so you. you know, no one can predict the future. No, you can't. And you look at this company as a global perspective, as a as a strong company that's very yeah. Uh, they, they they like their own stuff. They don't right. really co-associate right. with other other people and stuff like that. That's not what they do. But things happen. Next thing you know, they want to sell it to Anheuser Busch or Coors Miller or something. It, you know, it, you it know happens, what I mean? Right. Yeah, you got the data. It, it happens. Going right, and you know, chances of that are slim. But can we put a, a couple sentences in on a permit well, to help? Well, Let's be honest, you know. Jimmy heard. Yeah. You know, Jim goes, kids sold it, tell us. Right. I mean, and I'm right across the street. So, anyways, um, my other concern is, um, uh, <coughs> you know, obviously the noise, but also could there be a restriction as to the number of venues in the course of a year? 
you know, I, I'm just saying, and I know, I, I think, Bernie, you, you're, you're sort of on the plane that I think we need to put some limits and some restrictions while not constricting the treehouse folks, but at the same time, it benefits the neighbors, the abutters around you. You know right. what I mean? Because of the fact that, say, down the road, these guys get an offer and, you know, they punch out and whatever. Who's the, who's the next owner? Right. Uh, What's the next owner? Okay. And uh, uh, right. so I, I guess the, those are my things. The venue, the time, the decibel, I'm good, I'm, you know, I guess I'm glad that you're facing west. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the train's going by, that's a great thing. A long time coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've sort of got in my head, Pelican, it, it is what it is. But I was just concerned about where, how the music, the venue was going to be set up. So I would just like to see it at the end of the day, some conditions built in in terms of how much, you know, uh, activity. And, and not taking away from Treehouse, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, having run the industrial park, uh, been out since 93 in the last seven, eight years as chairman, you know, you just build things in that protect everyone in the park, mm -hmm. everyone in the neighborhood, the abutters. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, anybody else here? One, two, three. You guys are all together. Gentlemen in the here. You're with the reporter. Could I address some comments? Um, maybe we'll take all the public comment and then you can kind of wrap it up at the at the end. Does that work for you? In that case fine. people have the same similar questions. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Ms. Gannett, do you want to manage the uh, public comment if anybody has any on online or on the phone? Yes, so Carolyn, would you like to speak? Yes, um, it's Carolyn Ness, uh, Board of Selectmen and Board of Health. Uh, we reviewed this, obviously, and we felt very supportive of the entertainment license um, based on their reputation and that it's a yearly renewal of the entertainment license. We felt very comfortable with their attitude of um, if it's going to be a busy weekend, like Fourth of July weekend, they would be doing you know, having a police detail and that they would respond um, to, you know, to complaints relatively fast. So we were very comfortable uh, supporting this application for the entertainment license and we hope that you will grant their waiver. I don't see any Thank more you. hands yeah. up. Okay, Council, if you want to address the, Mr. McDaniel, do you have anything? No. Okay, Council. So, um, so I'd like to thank um, um, the, the neighbor for his comments because Treehouse very much wants to know any concerns the neighbors have. They want to be a good neighbor. Um, they, they want to fit into the community in, in Deerfield. And I think they've shown that time and time again in terms of his current involvement with the town to the extent possible. Um, it sounds as if, I don't want to put words in, in, in the gentleman's mouth or, or any of the board members, but it sounds like the concern is, you know, what happens if Treehouse no longer operates the property? Folks are less concerned about Treehouse, but more concerned about in perpetuity. And so I would happily, um, uh, you know, agree to a condition of approval that the special permit be granted to uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, Inc., um, or, or, uh, or an affiliate or its, its property owner, because if for some reason they change at some point, but they still remain the same company. Um, if they change the name, something along those lines, and I can work with council in terms of that language, but we're happy to make it specific to Tree Aspirin Company. Okay. Uh, realistically, how many shows are you looking to do, and are you really looking to go to 11 o'clock at night? So. It's been my experience at Treehouse of Shows because I've attended some of the concerts. And I think, as I mentioned to some of the board members that did the site visit, uh, it's very family friendly. So this is not a very loud concert. This is one you can bring your young children to. I saw what looked like a four-year-old at the event that I was attending in Charlton. Uh, generally, they would close, um, the, 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 the concert would probably end around before 11 p.m. It wouldn't go to 11 p.m. But uh, I don't want to specifically, I'd rather consult with the client in terms of what the timing would be before I, um, you know, say definitively what the hours would be. Um, in terms of the number of concerts, it, it varies based on the talent. There might be a situation where there isn't talent for an extended period of time, and then there's a few concerts all at once. People are on tour during the summertime. It, there, there needs to be some flexibility in terms of when the concerts take place in mm -hmm. terms of the number of concerts. Now, 
all of these are outdoor events. To, to be clear, they're, they're not all outdoor. So there might be concerts indoors during the winter time, or there might be a situation where it's inclement weather and they've got this amazing act and it's a smaller concert. They might move it into the auditorium. The beauty of this site is there's great indoor and outdoor spaces. Right. So Treehouse wants to maximize its use of this property in order to provide the best experience for, for its patrons. So uh, in the summertime, it would make sense for it to be outside. You know, these lovely sunsets that we've seen the last couple of days. We, Treehouse wants to make use of the natural beauty of this property. They bought it for, for that reason, right? It's, it's, it's this lovely vegetated property. So um, I, I would suspect that in the warmer months, in the seasonal months, it would, the concerts would be outside. And then in, in the winter, the fall and spring, and depending on inclement weather, there, there could be some indoor concerts. Hmm. Yes. Mr. Decker. In Carrollton, you have the pavilion. Yes, sir. Are you going? Are you planning to construct the pavilion in your? Not as part of phase two. Not as part of phase two. You wouldn't object if we you just said we couldn't expand it and put a pavilion outside. You certainly know up front what you want to do, so that we can, when we issue the permits, that uh, you know we understand what your vision is. Mm -hmm. and, and what have you, uh, rather than uh, later. I'm not objecting to a pavilion. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think people in town really would like to know what your overall scope of your plans are sure. so they can better. Sure, no, I, I understand that it's a large property and, and folks have, have interest in terms of what the future phases will hold. I, I personally am curious to see what the future holds, and I, I, I don't know specifically. And so Treehouse is putting forward this phase two plan in terms of what they're comfortable with in the, in, in the short term. Um, and, 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 that's, and that's what they can commit to at this time. But in terms of the pavilion, they might decide that they don't want to do the pavilion. They might find that the exterior portion um, works as it is. They might want two pavilions. I, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be proposed in the future. All right. Now, you're proposing an occupancy limit of roughly 500? Yes, sir. On proposal. The entire property at any time there can't be more than fifty five excuse me, five hundred patrons. Okay. So then if you would you would have to amend that number if you did put a pavilion in, I would assume. Sure. Yep. I don't think they would, but that's what their cap's at. So you can't Yeah. They're they and that's also their liquor license cap and that you know, and I know that's outside of our purview, but for sake of argument, there's no Time that there's going to be more than 500 people on that site. Patrons, that, that as well as patrons. Yes, sir. Oh, staff and patrons. Correct. Occupancy is 500. All right. Well, actually, let me confirm that. And patrons. Sorry, correction. It's just patrons. That would not include. Um, Doesn't staff. include the staff. No. Your staff is roughly 160 to 200? No, oh, God, no. Um, that'd be quite the machine. Uh, I think at this time, we're anticipating around 40 staff, at, 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 and that's total staff being hired. So at any given time, it might be, what, 25? 25 staff members? 525. Max occupancy. Through phase two. Correct. So, I don't have much of a problem with the concerts inside, where the noise level isn't on the outside, but I do have a problem with an outside. A number that you would be comfortable with, that you think you could live with. Uh, I'm not saying I don't want to low boy, I don't want you to high ball me, but you know, just give, me, give us a number that uh, we can work with. On the outside concert, I'm not worried about inside stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a little, small little use of thing inside, that doesn't bother me. But it does if you have 500 people outside. Sure. Uh, so you're talking about total number of concerts per year, correct? Not any given month or any given period. Well, I would, I have a something in mind of a number annually, and with, would basically uh, the idea of how many would be reasonable in any one month. And obviously, in December, you're not going to run a solo concert. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. But, but if, I'm, if I may, I, I feel like you're trying to get at an, an, an approximate average of what we can expect and maybe maybe set a conditional limit on what they can do. And, and my, my suggestion or recommendation is that we're going to see them over the course of the year. We're going to renew our approval every year. We'll no, no. Not us. No. To, be, to be clear, it's the entertainment license renewed yeah. every year. Yeah. Will Which be is our reviewed by or renewed by whom? Select like board. Yeah. So, so they will have an opportunity to observe Correct. and take you know note of how it goes but in reality, as opposed to having this gentleman predict and tell us what he thinks. Let let it just run and you know let's see how it goes. Let's trust past experience and um, uh, you know they're they're not looking to. Uh, stuff in concerts every weekend that's not their game, right. as far as I understand it. Correct. Mr. Chair? Oh, we have yes, Ms. Gannett. Um, I just would like uh, attorney um, Bornstein to uh, explain the word concert because it's not always what some, somebody would think is a concert. Um, yeah. Maybe a couple of people, um, you know, singing and performing and not, and then, you know, just just for the board to understand. Yeah, yeah so, so what I will say is that there will likely be fairly regularly on a reoccurring basis, live entertainment. So there might be a smaller band, there might be an acoustic, acoustic singer with a guitar, which I don't think you're, you're concerned about this instance. You're more concerned about ticketed concert events, right? The 500. I'm people. thinking about the big concert that Dolly Parton had in Glastonbury that was on TV for so long. Right. Uh, okay. I don't know when that was, but um, I imagine it was uh, it was a great experience. It was Glastonbury, England. It wasn't Glastonbury. Okay. Gotcha. So I understand your concerns. Uh, at this point, Treehouse is proposing that live entertainment and those ticketed concert events. And so, the, generally, the concerts have historically been. Um, Alternative bands, uh, indie indie bands. So we're not talking, you know, heavy metal bands. We're not talking, you know, very loud concerts. And beyond that, aside from just the genres of music, because that's just anecdotal, we're really held by, in terms of the decibel levels, how loud the music can be. So regardless of what the genre of music is, if the Board of Health receives a complaint, and there will be, as as um, um, as as Ms. Neff said. Uh, there will be a police detail at all the concerts, right? So the, the, the police force will be there to ensure that the public safety is, is, is upheld, right? So if, if the music is too loud, they can notify the treehouse as the operator or the producer of, or, or, or the sound engineer for the particular concert. Um, if, they, if someone gets a noise complaint, I imagine that uh, the police have the capability to notify the police detail that, hey, we need to send notice to the sound engineer. So it's not as if Treehouse is at left of its own devices. It can, you know, turn up the music as loud as it wants. So, and beyond that, um, as, as Mr. Potter indicated, uh, we're subject to the entertainment license, which is annually renew, renewed. And to the extent that there's an issue with the entertainment at the property, the select board can, can put um, restrictions in terms on, of, of the number of concerts. To uh, support a certain number of ticketed concerts. Concerts don't really bother me. The inside ones don't, but the ticketed ones do. I don't know that I will vote for the session permit unless we had that number of pegs. And you can always come back in and get it revised based on your track record. Okay. So that's where I'm coming from. No, I, all right, so we only have Mr. Costa here until 7, so I have a couple questions for him. I got one. So uh, if you, unless you, uh, you have a question for the, the lawyer, and then I'll, I'll, I got a couple. Um, my only comment was going to be, regardless of whether an event is ticketed or free, it could be the same decibel concern regardless. So that's a yeah, moot point. Um, but I, I I would tend to to agree with you. I don't see 365 days a year of concerts, but I also see something that the applicant might agree to or 
you know, if you say no outside concerts lasting longer than an hour after sunset or something like that, I don't know if that's something the board wants to entertain or not. To me, I, you know, you, you look at that and their operating hour, hours, what days a week, they're really going to be open until 10, 11 o'clock. We've heard from some of others, but, um, Mr. Costa, if you're available. I am. Good evening. Nice to see you here uh, joining us tonight. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so you're only available until 7 tonight, and then you're coming back at what point? Or No, I've got flexibility beyond 7 o'clock. You do have flexibility beyond 7 o'clock. Okay. Oh, um, sorry about that. All right, so uh, I guess my only question, my question at this point would be um, the application as presented is um, a co-applicant, a name of applicant, Treehouse Brewery Company, Inc. Two is Landu Realty, LLC. We would condition or if the board wished to, to approve this special permit as, as applied, and we would want to condition it to Treehouse Brewing only, um, not the property therein is that um, a good legal uh, condition? Um, so um, I can't really address whether it's whether it's uh, good because that's a matter for the board's discretion. In terms of whether it's a legal condition, it absolutely is. Uh, zoning boards of appeal or planning boards, for that matter, when they're acting as a special permit granting authority, can condition a special permit to make it specific to an applicant. That's one way in which uh, special permits differ from variances, for example. Variances must run with the land. They are particular to the property, uh, and you cannot limit them to a, an individual applicant. But special permits, like the one before you, can absolutely be restricted to an applicant. The, the point I think that the applicant's counsel was making, and I would certainly um, uh, support it, is that you just want to choose your words carefully because very often when you're dealing with entities of a certain size, um, the, it may be that there are uh, subsidiaries or affiliates uh, to which the, 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 the project, the permit, um, the interest in the property, leasehold or otherwise, is transferred, whether it be for financing reasons or it be for liability reasons. Uh, you may have a single purpose limited liability company that is created, you know, Treehouse Deerfield LLC. So typically what you would want to do then is you would want to structure the condition if the objective is to, to, to be certain that it is treehouse brewing that will be operating for all intents and purposes, the special permit that you're granting, if you do grant it, you would, you would, you would craft a condition making the, the permit specific to treehouse or its uh, affiliates, subsidiaries. Again, we can work through the language, but something that provides the applicant with some degree of flexibility, but still gives the board and the town the assurance it wants that it's going to be some related entity and not some third party uh, to, 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 to which the, the permit is transferred at arm's length. Okay, thank you, Mr. Costa. Does anybody else have any yeah, questions right, right now? Oh, yep, Mr. Sosky has yeah, a question um, for you. On the noise issue, maybe we could have, um, I, I think if you have a procedure, if there is a noise complaint, that uh, that be handled. Uh, I know that Mr. Decker's concerned and Mr. Oshesko's concerned, and I guess I have a concern too. Um, if we have a procedure to follow, if there is a complaint, that it will be handled. I think that would be a reasonable thing to, to deal with. Um, doesn't sound like there's going to be, but who knows what, what, what could happen. Um, so if there's a procedure that we have, maybe there are out of conditions or something where these people could feel comfortable if there is a complaint, that there is a procedure that we followed, uh, to alleviate the uh, the issues we have, uh, that's I think would be reasonable. But that's what my opinion is. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask for that. I, you have uh, the uh, the decibel count, but does the town have the ability to check the decibel count? Yes, our town does. Okay. Yes, we do. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Costa, Mrs. Remillard. Um, well, I, I like your suggestion, Bernie, but at the same time, I think if a neighbor or in a, someone in the proximity hears the noise, they're just gonna call the police department. So while it's a great suggestion as to what 
a board or the town could do after the fact to rectify the situation. Most people to file a complaint about noise are just in the public police department, and then the police will be notified and take action or not take action at that um, point, I assume. Might be recognized, Mr. Yes, go ahead. I don't think we have a noise restriction in town, is from my understanding. I believe for the, maybe not the level of noise, um, but the time period, there is a sound, there's uh, quiet hours. Um, you have to, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning is, is fine, um, and that's why on Sunday that it would be before 11 o'clock, and then during the week it's 11, because I've looked those up myself. Uh, Bernie, I have a piece in good order. 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. in the morning okay. yep. during the oh, week, so okay. 11 p.m. And then Sunday is the only one that's like later time and not as long duration for, um, for time. So while Mr. Decker and Mr. Um, and Paul, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name and I don't want to butcher well, it, um, you know, have concerns with that, um, you know, like I live in this, I live southerly. I hear the football games on Friday nights, you know, where I live and stuff. But it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you kind of understand they happen on Friday nights. It's there. Um, and maybe the mitigating factor is making it till 9 o'clock at night in the conditions versus the 11 o'clock because, you know, most people um, have quiet down. And, and I do understand the, the neighbor's concerns. Um, you know, I live right next to the train myself. I, I sleep through it after a while. But the point is, is that um, you can you can mitigate the, mitigate it so far. But if you restrict it to a number of venues or a number of events that occur outside, you know, are you? It, it becomes um, really micromanaging because then you're like, okay, well, you've got this many concerts this this week and this month versus November where a lot of bands may not be touring, so you're gonna have, you know, less concerts outside versus other things. So you're really restricting the applicant um, with their entertainment license with that was already granted, um, in my opinion, more than necessary. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair. Any other? Uh, uh, would like? Oh, can, can I just have one second? Sure, all right. People, I'm gonna, we'll take public comment now. Uh, anybody that wants to, to do the public comment, we'll take it. Uh, then after that, we're going to move on to uh, keeping the hearing open. And if there's any other town officials that want to make comments, and then we'll negotiate here with the applicant before we close the public hearing, just so everybody's on the same page. Go ahead, Tolly. Hi. Uh, Tolly Stark. I live on uh, Keats Road. Just want to um, thank everyone for their time this evening. And um, as I've been listening to the meeting, I really appreciate all the thoughtfulness that everyone's putting into this. And um, I just remember from the last meeting um, when Treehouse was in front of the ZBA that um, there were quite a few people that actually spoke up um, really excited about the concerts that were going to happen at Treehouse and um, abutters as well that live close to Treehouse that were, um, you know, more than flexible to be, you know, having um, entertainment there. And um, I would definitely say that when I've spoken with people in the community about it, it's a really uh, positive thing for Deerfield and a lot of folks are looking forward to that. And also, um, I just wanted to also mention the really important um, kind of economic multiplier effect that Deerfield um, will experience with having Treehouse here and having them um, have this entertainment license and um, provide this service in Deerfield and how important that's gonna be for Deerfield overall. So I just hope that the ZBA takes that into consideration as they um, continue uh, with this matter. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. A I don't see else, any Jen? more. No, I don't see anybody else. Uh, she's got a mic. A mouse. Okay. Um, so, in my opinion, the applicant meets the requirements. Um, my iPad, I think it starts here at 39 or so, of what they're what they're asking for. 
under our bylaws. Um, I am open to uh, board discussion about timing for the special permit. Uh, I don't know. I, I think things change as seasons change. And I don't think hard hours make sense for this, um, for the outdoor concerts. Um, if I was going to support a condition on timing prior to 11 o'clock p.m., um, I would think it's something like an hour and a half after sunset or, you know, something like that where it's not, it's different in July. You know, I think it's, it would be a little bit unreasonable for the applicant to say, well, nothing after nine. Well, it's almost so late in June until nine. Um, and I think that's something that the applicant may look at in their own business practice and say, you know, we're not going to have people out at 11 o'clock at night when it's cold. So other than, that, other than that condition, I would support it for saying that it meets the criteria of the bylaw um, for what they want to do for phase two. And if there is a phase three and they come back to us, then we can talk about those other things. Um, that may or may not happen, but I don't think that we should really worry about that stuff tonight. Um, and then we'll go from there. So, yes, sure. Um, I agree with you. I'm not having a hard time. My only concern is if somebody wanted to make a complaint or go ask, make, do something in a negative way to detrimental to them, to the you know, to the venue or whatever treehouse, you know. Um, it's five minutes past what someone considers dark versus another person. Well, the National dark. Weather Service publishes every day sunset. Good. So we There's could use that as our solidifying time. So if we wanted to. I mean, that's it's the what I'm looking at. If, if, if you don't have concrete details, people get really, yeah. And you also, you know, I think you know what I mean, right? every year the Board of Selectmen persons, I'm sorry, is has to reissue the entertainment license. Yep. So if there is issues, they can go there. So we may not want to condition it. That's up for the board to decide. Adam? But I think, we have, yes. Adam Costa has his hand raised. Sure. Attorney. So Mr. Chair, I just wanted to offer for, for what it's worth, it may be helpful because I've been listening to the discussion over the past hour and I've heard the concerns raised about uh, the entertainment aspect of, of the operation. And I've heard the concerns raised about um, hours of, of concerts and whatnot and the noise that might accompany that. So um, this is a unique proposal, not, not unusual, um, particularly not uh, these days with, with, uh, with, with breweries and distilleries and whatnot, but it's unique in the sense that it requires so many different permits and approvals from so many different entities, each that have their own respective areas of expertise and jurisdiction. So this particular applicant has been to the Board of Selectmen, acting also as the Board of Health uh, for the entertainment license. They've been to the planning board for site plan review or now a modification. And they're before your board again for an amendment to the special permit. So regarding noise in particular and how that noise might be related to the entertainment uh, component of the, of the proposal, um, certainly to some extent that's within your purview. I'm not gonna tell you that it's not. We've, we've uh, your board is well aware because we've talked about it in the context of other projects of the special permit standard and uh, balancing the benefit to the community against the potential detriment to the town and the neighborhood. And certainly excessive noise is a potential detriment to the neighborhood. So yes, noise is within your purview, but also where the noise is linked not to necessarily the everyday operation of a brewery, or even the retail component of the brewery, but is linked to a specific aspect, at least in terms of the concerns that are being raised. And that aspect is the entertainment and where that aspect is what requires a very specific license that needs to be renewed annually from your board of selectmen or your select board, which also happens in Deerfield to be the board of health as well. And where noise complaints would go to the board of health typically, um, I think that that provides certainly the, the, the board of health, your, your select board, with an opportunity annually to do something that might not be possible with other types of uses. If you have a traditional commercial or industrial use come to your board, the ZBA, asking for a special permit, 
once you issue that permit with or without conditions, um, the permit has been issued, it exists, and there's no second bite at the apple for your board. And if there are noise issues, you either got to use whatever authority you have to get that applicant back before you, or you've got to live with it because you didn't properly condition the project. In this case, the town as a whole through the select board has that annual bite at the apple. You can be sure that if there are noise complaints and those noise complaints are going initially to the police department, but then are making their way to the select board and or the board of health, again, same, same, same body in Deerfield, that when the annual renewal comes up, that's gonna be a topic of conversation and the select board could well say, you know, we're not so comfortable with the lack of restrictions we placed on you last year, or we're not comfortable with an end time of 11 or 11.30 p.m. We got to walk that back a bit because it's just not working for the neighborhood. We're getting too many noise complaints. And you do indeed have specifically for alcoholic beverage establishments, you do have a provision in your bylaw that limits noise. It's an excessive noise uh, provision that says that all entertainment that's presented at these licensed premises have to be conducted so that there isn't any excessive noise that's audible either on adjoining streets or on abutting premises. So you have real teeth behind that, that enforcement ability as a community um, that you might not have in some other context. So I just wanted to provide that additional information because I think it's, I think it's helpful. It, this is a unique application because of the need for that additional annual license. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Costa. And I do, do agree with, with your perspective on that. I just wanted to make sure that all the board members had the opportunity to uh, to give input on on if they want us to go down that path uh, of conditioning it. Um, at this point, um, the applicant have anything further in regards to that? Okay, uh, Mr. Decker. I have a question: Is it Treehouse Growing Corporation or company? So. Treehouse Brewing Company Inc. So it's a corporation. Yes. Okay, because some of the information that's in the packet just says a treehouse company. It, it Bob, if in the beginning, if you read, they put in there quotations referred herein as treehouse. The defined term. Yeah. And the and defined term. Looking at the uh, stormwater permit. And that's right, and it has referred to as in herein. All right. Well, I just want to make sure that it needs to have. Names you can name. see that with your eye dilated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, through the chair, uh, we would work with the town council to ensure that the correct entity, Treehouse Brewing Company Inc., is referenced in the special permit. All right, but you wouldn't have any problem if we put in it on the permit that it's non-transferable without coming back to the zoning board of appeal. We are comfortable with that—that that it's specific to the applicant and does not run with the land. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. Uh, the other thing that I, I would I would be comfortable limiting the ticketed events to 50th of the year calendar year. So basically, uh, you know, four months, or you could use them any way you want. But I'd like to put a number on it. So you're saying outside or total? Outside one. Outside ticketed, not live entertainment. I'm not talking about the ones that are inside your building. And, it, what is it? and to be clear, we're not talking about live entertainment. So, you know, a local youth that is a great singer comes out with a guitar and is playing for the patrons. That's not part of it. So we, we'd have to specify. Well, he said ticketed. Ticketed, okay. And he's just one member of the board, but we respect all of our board members' opinions. And we'll give the applicant time to respond if they want to respond to that. And then, you know, that's... I just, you know and if you want more... Ticket event next year, back more. Well, that could be part of the three, the phase yeah. three application. It, it, it could also, uh, through the chair, it could also be part of our entertainment license application. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Gannett? I have a hands up. Um, Carolyn? Okay. Yes. Um, I just wanted to remind the board that limiting. Um, to say 50 events really um, is is not appropriate because um, the select board that is a select board um, determination on on the enter entertainment license as you know based on their experience going forward and the reason why it is a concern for me is because we have this 
when you say ticketed, if they choose to do free events, you have no ability to really uh, monitor the number of people. If there's a very popular you know, singer or something, a guitarist or whatever, whoever, inter whatever entertainment they have, and you want to make sure that there truly is limited to 500 people, having a ticketed event, make sure that you're not allowing access to the 500 on premises. So saying whether it's a ticketed event, limiting ticket events to 50, yeah. Is, is not appropriate because one of the things that we as a select board want to make sure we can do is, is review the entertainment license every year. And also, like I said, this is one way as the Board of Health, we are monitoring the number of people on premises and as a select board for the licensing of the pour, pouring permits, the, the restaurants and all that kind of stuff. So I would appreciate not having limits to their events and we'll let us monitor it. Miss, uh, thank you, Ms. Shorza. Mr. Costa, do we have the legal authority to grant, uh, to make that a condition or not? So, Mr. Chairman, you, you have, uh, on the one hand, broad authority with respect to conditions. Section 5340 of the zoning bylaw says you can impose as a ZBA reasonable conditions, safeguards, and limitations on time or use. With that said, okay. I do want to I do want to highlight that the conditions you impose, and, and I, I did say reasonable because that's the term oh, yeah. in your bylaw, and it's it's consistent it's consistent with case law. They need to be reasonably related to your scope of jurisdiction. So. To the extent, for example, that you were going to limit, uh, place a condition that limited uh, a number of number of ticketed events or number of patrons, you would need to establish that that limitation serves one of the purposes that you have the ability to impose. You have the ability to weigh, I should say, under the zoning bylaw. So when the when the select board is acting on a license application, their standard is health, safety, and welfare. That's the standard that they apply. You don't apply a health, safety, and welfare standard. You apply a traffic, adequacy of utilities, neighborhood character. You you apply that right. six-part test in your zoning. Right. right. It, would, it, would, it would fall under neighborhood character. Okay. It might. Thank it you. It might. Right. It, it, uh, it's yes. Matched. Go ahead, counsel. So in terms of the neighborhood character, um, and I, I understand the neighbor's concerns in terms of noise, but um, as certain um, members of this board heard today, the Pelican noise is, is pretty pretty loud. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of this property is that it's 40 acres of land, and there are there aren't too many direct residential abutters to this property. Not the way of, you're planning on. In facing. terms of the way we're in terms of the way right. the audio is going to be directed. So when we uh, proposed this application and provided this application to the town, we met with the Board of Health agent. And we spoke at length about the noise. Mm -hmm. And he asked us to do what we did, which was test the, test the noise levels because he wanted to make sure that to the extent that there are noise complaints, the town can enforce um, the, the necessary uh, noise requirements. Mm -hmm. And so we tested along the residential boundaries, which is along the railroad. And if you look at the layout of the properties on North Main, that residential properties are quite a distance, mm -hmm. distance from the rear yard setback. So aside from the fact that it was 50 decibels at the property line, you also have this great distance to North Main Street. So we understand the concerns, but we would respectfully ask that any issues in terms or questions related to noise be uh, left to be dealt with the select board. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So that's where you stand. You don't, you don't want to propose any other conditions on that you want us to move forward with your application as as is to the extent that this board feels comfortable approving the application that's how we would see fit if if board members have, continue to have reservations about granting the relief we're happy to talk about any other conditions that they think might be appropriate okay any board members want to further negotiate in this period of time is from what i understand where we have the ability to negotiate conditions if we were to vote to approve it when we get into the next phase, when we close the public hearing, we have a limited to no ability to negotiate with the applicant. Uh, 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 well, to, this is Jared, just to be clear, and I, I suggest that you have counsel confirm. Yep. Uh, once you close the public hearing, when you have that discussion, you can certainly have discussions about what conditions to the extent that the board would see fit. Uh, 
I believe you can speak with the applicant about the condition. Uh, well, we just went through this, and my, my memory serves me correct. Uh, maybe it was the applicant's purview that they didn't want to talk to us. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but Adam at, at this Costa. Point, uh, can I just Jen for one second? Yeah, and yeah. And then I'll, I'll before we close the public hearing, I'll make sure Mr. Costa and everybody here is on the same page. But while we still have the public hearing open, does anybody else on the board have any questions for the applicant? He answered the one on the on the number of people. Uh, he answered the thing about the transferring the permit. Yes. Uh, you suggested uh, that no concert go after 90 minutes after sunset. I thought and that that was a possible. Some, I had some merit. I, I I don't. I'm fine with the if the board's fine with the with the oversight under other boards, and if our board is fine with not conditioning it and going with the entertainment license issued by the board of select persons, that's fine with me too. I just, if other board members wanted to condition it to earlier, I thought that a straight hours condition in this situation, because our concern, your concern, Mr. Decker, and a butter's concern was more of the outdoor venue, that we would, it, that it would make more sense to do that. Um, but that's up to, to everybody. That's not up to just me. But my thought on it was if if the members of the board wanted that, if they wanted to do that, then I thought that a common sense approach that has more flexibility on time versus the time of the year would be would be best. But <clears throat> and one other question I haven't mentioned it, I think going Really pretty. You're going to put additional restrooms outside. So through, through the chair. Yes. We, we are we are not providing additional restrooms outside based on consultation with the board of health agent. Uh, outdoor bathrooms are not required based on the proposed 500 person um, patron occupancy. They're pretty close. The indoor ones. When we went to the site visit, they're pretty close though, right? They're Correct. right at the at the Winter Garden, almost at the southeast corner of the winter garden it, through the chair uh i believe at the planning board meeting um uh, uh, uh miss nats indicated that going forward with other phases she would ask that outdoor uh, bathroom toilet rooms be provided and uh, we we're certainly willing to explore that to the extent that that that's needed based on the additional occupancy so in terms of the outdoor bathrooms it's, it's, it's our perspective based on our discussions with with Triassic Architects, and in, in also in consultation with the Board of Health agent, that um, the, the proposed bathrooms as modified, because there are some interior alterations to add additional toilet rooms in the Winter Garden building, will be sufficient for um, all activity inside and outside the building. Okay, thank you, Council. Does anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? Uh, I see a hand up. Ms. Shores Ness has a hand. Do we I, I just yeah. want to clear. I just want to clarify, Adam. Thank you. Um, uh, that in phase three was my concern about the outside bathrooms. Phase two doesn't require it at this point um, because it is um, within the use uh, uh, limitations. But for the for health and safety reasons and more activity um, happening in phase three, we would encourage um, outside bathrooms and would never approve porta potty kind of things. But they haven't really formalized what their outdoor activities are going to be related to phase three. So uh, we're, we're, we're certainly monitoring on. we're monitoring that situation but but phase two at this point is 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 fine. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Costa if you're there I am. All right. So we're going to first, we're going to make a motion to close public comment. Uh, I entertain a motion to close public comment. And then um, after that, if that gets voted through, then the pre procedure would be to close the public hearing and then decide if we're going to approve uh, the permit or not, and then approve with conditions or deny the permit. Um, I just wanted to run that procedurally by you um, before we move forward. 
Uh, that procedure is fine, Mr. Chair. You can you can obviously combine uh, closing public comment and closing the hearing unless there's something you want to achieve in between those two steps. Um, often you just simply close the hearing and that obviously would cut off public comment simultaneously. Okay, well, I before we close that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the uh, public hearing then. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, we usually make that decision. Uh, Mr. Saversky's absent, so don't we make that as when we go to the next phase? Not now, right, Mr. Costa? I, I missed the question, I mean, I, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're short one member tonight. Mr. Saversky's not with us, so based on seniority, I would pick uh, Alex to be the voting member tonight. But do I need to do that now or after I close the public hearing? Does it make a difference? Uh, you, you can do it before you close the hearing. That would be best. Okay. Mr. Chair, just to confirm with counsel, you asked the question of whether or not you could close the public hearing and then speak to the applicant. Right. Just and and we can still speak to the applicant after we close the public hearing, correct? Uh, you, you can, Mr. Chair. The only restriction is that you can't accept new information. So if you had a point of clarification, that would be sufficient. But if you needed new information that hadn't already been entered into the record, you couldn't accept it once the public hearing is closed. Right. So that would be like negotiating, like, let's say, for example, they wanted uh, a board member wanted a condition of X number of concerts or ticketed or not. They couldn't then provide new information on what they wanted for that. That's correct. Correct. OK. Now that we got that clarified. Is everybody on the board comfortable with closing the public hearing? We have a motion. So and it was seconded. Motion was made by Ms. Remillard, seconded by Mr. Decker. All those in favor? I'll second it. Okay. No. Second. Okay. That'd be recognized, Mr. Chair. Well, can we, uh, yes, we, yeah, go ahead. We have a bathroom break. Well, let's just do this vote first. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you get old, you'll know what I'm worth. Oh, we're about. an hour and 20 minutes in here. I okay. I know. Well, I was planning on 7:30. We're almost there. So everybody's in I'm favor sorry. of closing the public hearing. Okay. So it's a unanimous vote. Yes. All right. So now I'll make a motion to do a five. Do you need 10 minutes or five? Five should be sufficient. Okay. I'll make a motion to recess for five minutes. Second. Okay. I don't think so. I can just make a recess. I got a cheat sheet over here about these rules. But Good. Good, Mr. Everybody's good now. Good. FCAT good. They never stopped us. Oh, we just we had all this fun <laughs> stuff for all the viewing public. Yeah. Yeah. Could be Netflix famous. Maybe they'll Yeah. Well. Okay. We're reconvening. Board members. Are we in discussion? Is that what we're into? We we are the public hearing's been closed. We can have a discussion. We can do a vote. We can make conditions. Are we in deliberations at this point? We're in deliberations. We can make a motion to adjourn. I mean, whatever you guys want to do, I'm here for here for you. Well, you know, I think that the whole project is a great project. I just want to make sure that we have some limitations on what can happen there. And right now, there aren't any limitations on the number of events. And I think that we want to get a handle on it before it goes out of sight. Because it's a marketable thing right now with concert venue and entertainment venue and everything else. Somebody could come in and pay them $15, $20 million to buy the whole thing out. And we'd have to deal with whatever's there. We don't put any restrictions on it. This well, way. I would be in favor of uh, the condition that the applicant already said that they were willing to work out with Adam Cox so that the permit stays with them. That this, this ownership group retains the permit and the permit doesn't move to a, another buyer. Um, as far as that, I think that you know, I have faith in our other licensing authorities 
to do their job if there's an issue. I think it is a, I do agree that there is a very, it is a very broad entertainment license. Um, far broader than I think people understand. Right. They tried to pull an entertainment license in Waitley a number of years ago. That never happened, did it? So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't for particular things, but you know, I take the applicant at face value based on their business practice that um, that you know they want to be members of the community. They don't want to irritate neighbors. They don't want to change things. I mean, based on the plans and the in the site visit, you know, heart is that loud all night long. It almost becomes that death noise where. If you're not listening to it, you don't really hear it when you're walking. But when you walk up, when you come out of their building and you can hear it, you're like, oh, you're right up against the railroad tracks and you can hear it. So I, uh, you know, I would vote to approve to approve it. Um, if the other board members have other ideas and want other things, please speak up. While I am not allowed to vote, you know, please speak up. Um, sure. I feel that the applicant has been very forthcoming answering all of the questions that we've had for those um, who went to their other location as well as the location that's here in South Sheerfield that they're re renovating the Channing Bay building. Um, they've been um, very, you know, like they did the traffic count that was a major concern before and presented that, that information. Um, their traffic flow while they've been open in phase one hasn't been a major issue. Um, I mean, construction is more of an issue on Route 5 and 10 than, you know, treehouse traffic. And if they're capped at 500 people during phase two, um, I even don't see that being an issue. You have constant traffic. If you look at Yankee Candle uh, parking lot, you know, they get massive amount of influx and, you know, of, of cars, um, and it's a more dense traffic area, so I don't think that is an issue. Um, I think their offering to the walkthroughs gives an idea of what is currently in existence, what's going forward. Um, while I understand other board members' concerns about phase three, we're addressing specifically phase two, I think the fact that hearing or noise complaint, you know, they, they Board of Health representatives had them conduct a decibel rating um, process shows that the applicant is agreeable to making sure that they don't go above that level. Um, I think implementing the plate, you know, the in place process with, you know, on site police detail, if that's an option through the police department, um, you know, with Chief Pachoric and um, Treehouse specifically. From observations, it seems like there's a very good working relationship with Treehouse in the town in existence, and they've been wanting to become community partners. Um, you know, clearly evident with them, with, with the town utilizing the parking lot to do the vaccine clinics. Um, I also, as you, Mr. Chair, have faith in our other licensing you know, and boards that have issued these in the comments received, you know, from the other boards, there were no major concerns listed at all, no, no comments. Um, my other major concern was about the water sewer system um, effect that they would have, and it's very minimal. And, you know, I don't really see it being a detriment. You know, they've, they've answered all of our six questions under the special permit application process. Mm -hmm. I see that right in um, here, starting at the 5320. Yeah, it's, it's in the application. It's, I can go through them uh, one by one if the board so chooses, or if the board's familiar with the explanation and wants to waive that reading, that's, that's yeah. a, the purview of the board here. My only other comment was going to be the fact that there are major noise complaints, there's issues with the, you know all of these other things. I feel that the select board and the Board of Health can make that decision annually if ramifications need to be done. I do like the fact of the condition it being just the applicant and their associated groups 
Um, so that way there isn't, you know, concern about major conglomerate coming in and purchasing and having um, a free run, a free reign. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, completely in favor of uh, granting the special permit as is. As is. Um, I, I agree with uh, much of what I've heard here. Not concerned in the slightest that it will get out of hand, and I think that it's being done very strategically um, and uh, in a collaborative way. So I appreciate it. Uh, I agree with Mr. Decker about the limiting the number of concerts. You, you got an open ended thing. I, you did answer a good question, though, that, uh, that there are going to be police available that I assume will be paid for by Treehouse to uh, maintain any issues. Um, I wouldn't think you'd have a problem. I hope we don't. Um, I find that there's a famous saying that uh, with progress comes trouble. And no no project ever comes without some issues. There's always going to be an issue on, on something somewhere. Um, hopefully we'll be able to adjust those. And I think if we have a, a number of uh, venues and we find it's not a problem, you always come back and say things worked out. Because I don't think anyone really knows what this is going to look like. Um, you can't predict with the future how many people are going to come, uh, the traffic issues. Uh, if it, It's a work in progress from what I can see. Like anything in, in, that we work on, it's a work in project. Uh, and in, in progress, and you make adjustments. Um, I think it's a great project for the town. Uh, overall, I think it's a great thing, but I think there's some things that may be concerns uh, I know the issue of the noise is a concern for people. Uh, I don't live in town. I don't know what those noises are like, but I do. Where I live, I can hear 91 traffic, and I'm about three miles away. Depending upon the weather conditions, weather conditions play a part in how sound travels. But um, I think that our Board of Health can handle it. Um, I would like to see a limit on, on the number of concerts. I agree with Mr. Decker on that. Alex? So I do agree with Bernie and Mr. Decker that potentially um, a limit on the number um, nervous about committing hours. Um, ran into some trouble before doing that. Um, I have a clarifying question. Um, at the uh, select board hearing, what were the hours that were uh, agreed on, or if, if that was even? I believe it was, and the applicant, please correct us if it's wrong, it's not new information, is 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday, and then, what was it, 10 a.m. to, there was a earlier shutdown on Sunday. No, no one told noon to, Mr. Chair, it's uh, it's daily, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Daily. So the liquor license uh, is a different time. What's the time on the liquor license? Uh, it's, uh, I believe we requested 10 a.m. or might have been 8 a.m. actually, until. Um, stay with me here for a second. I have the application. I believe we said 10 a.m. to um, 11 p.m. Except Sunday was 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. because that's not permitted in the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. That's the selection to initiate. Fully to change that. The chair, correct. Properly. I couldn't hear much. The meeting was on that night. Yeah. So, uh, so under Master's law, towns um, through their select board have the ability to uh, adopt a certain provision under Master's Law in Chapter 138, which allows for the sale of alcohol between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. on Sundays. So some municipalities have adopted it, others have not. Deerfield has not adopted it. So because of that, technically, you are not allowed to pour alcohol before noon on Sundays. I kind of got some of that covered. Um, I do like the um, sort of sunk sunset clause that you mentioned earlier. Um, at night, it's going to be quite sunny, but I'm not going to have a concert going if they can't alcohol. But that's just a speculation. Um, 
Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, I have concerns about the noise, but seeing the site visit today and the way they have things orientated, um, they did their homework, so I mean, have the concerns that I thought about really strike me as something that I guess my anxiety was like, oh no, it's going to be this giant thing, and it's like, well, not so much. So I um, just want to make sure we're not missing anything, and um, we just do our due diligence, that's all. But uh, overall, I mean, I'm in favor. I don't. Okay. Well, if someone wants to make a motion to okay. approve, with, yes. May we recognize? Yes. Yeah, so you feel you feel comfortable with the uh, traffic pattern then? Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Okay. If I may. Yes. That uh, we uh, approve the requested special permit uh, amendment, but no conditions. Um. I'll second it for discussion. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Potter has been made with no conditions and it's been seconded. I would like the condition um, to make sure that this permit goes, stays with this ownership group, this tree house. And I can make that in a motion and then uh, if, if, or unless someone else wants to, I know a bunch, well, several people spoke that, to that. Mr. Decker, do you have Mr. Chairman, I would suggest we ask Mr. Potter to withdraw his motion temporarily, right? Try to line up what the motion should encompass. We think we could get consensus enough to pass because if Mr. Potter's motion would be called for a vote, it's been and seconded. He would have to amend. He would either have to amend, but if it was turned down, the whole application is dead. Right. And I don't think you want right. that. Right. Right. We don't want to do that. Okay. So. Right. We don't, we don't want okay. it. Well, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to remake the motion. So, uh, first, I would say that you would have to withdraw. I withdraw the motion. And then someone would have to second it. Made you withdraw your second it, Alex? Yes. Okay. And if someone would like to make a motion again to approve the special permit or deny. Well, do you want to discuss then? And, and well, I would just yeah, say. Because I'm open. I'm, I'm perfectly well, open if you, if, you're if, saying as far as. Um, right. You know, so, conditioning is to so procedurally, and Mr. Costa, if you're listening, procedurally, we need to take a vote to allow a special permit. And the, then after we can talk about conditions. Subject to conditions. Subject to conditions. And even if you, in your original motion, say subject to conditions and then we decide or vote on no conditions, then it would then pass or it would then be granted with no conditions. But by in your original motion saying no conditions, then we have no, if we voted on that, then we have no authority to grant conditions. And if we voted against that because someone wanted conditions, then the applicant wouldn't get their permit at all, and they would be have a big problem Understood. for two years. So why don't I, I can we suggest what would, what I think there's consensus on? You, you can speak, and, Mr. Decker, sure. And one would be the number of ticketed events and the uh, non-transferable and uh, that the uh, ticketed events n not operate after uh, 90 minutes after sundown. Okay. Do you and want me to poll the board to see if there's consensus on those two agenda? Uh, those on three the three things, right? Well, you, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy just to, to poll the board. We can do that first, and then yeah, we'll go from there. All right. So the three things that 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 you think we should poll the board on is one is the permit stays with the ownership group, right? Right, and the second one is you want number of outdoor performances, ticketed events, the outdoor or indoor or in general. Outdoor ticketed, and they can do what they want inside. What about if you change that to be paid ticketed events? Because they don't give up. They don't. 
But it's well, sometimes you do. Well, right, I don't have a problem. We could say paid ticketed events. So that way, if they do yeah. a ticketed event for free, yeah. they may not get any a huge what's your what's your third condition mr decker sunset clause. Sunset clause. so you a time or time restriction on outdoor concerts yeah what, and what what did you think on that that it has to shut down 90 minutes after sunset for outdoor only yeah can i ask a point of clarification yeah is the 11 p.m limit understood as the concert limit or the place needs to be packed up and you know shut down by 11. that's the extended a liquor license yeah i would say that the facility has to be closed everyone has to be it's not it's not uh there's no chanting for an encore at 59 <laughs> right you know what i mean that's, you know and they're usually pretty strict with the poor licenses and the abcc definitely is you know or this is that's outside of our purview but well, you know i just look for the clarification just so, so i understand that. okay so I will pull. Now, the other thing is, I didn't mention the number now as to the number of ticketed events. No, you didn't. You 50 earlier. Um, you know, is 50 reasonable enough, or do you think that. Uh, well, we can't take new information. Well, that's right. That's ship sale. That's right. why I asked you if you wanted to talk about it more before we close the term. 50 is fine. To the chair, though, I can agree to conditions after they've right. been presented. Yes. Well, That's where, right. Can I just ask Mr. Decker, where do you come up with the number 50? That basically doesn't quite give them one a week, okay? But it basically gives them more than four a month. And if you do the summer out, you know. Yeah, and they can use more of them in the summer than they're going to do in the winter, okay? And I, but it basically gives them an event every weekend, with the exception of two. And if they wanted to do a Friday and a Saturday night because they wanted to get a certain band in, they could do that because they're not going to want to run a lot of outside events in January or February. So they, you know, I try to give them some flexibility. I want them to succeed, but I also don't want to, to have it going 24, not 24 7, but 365 days. Okay. Mr. Chair, may I be recognized? You can be recognized, Mr. Okay. Um So we figured, figure four months that you're not, or three months are not going to be able to do it. Four months figure. I, months. I don't know when you know. I mean, I like right. the winter. I stand outside in the cold. Yeah, you know, I like I like snow. I like I like sledding parties. Yeah, you know, I mean, if we're, is that going to be enough? If we, that's why I'm asking is, is if we're going to get four months that there's going to be nothing in there. Well, you're giving them 50 yeah. that they get a charge for. Yeah. That's what Mr. Decker's saying. We yeah. haven't polled everybody yet. Yeah. So we don't know where everybody stands That's on why it. I'm but, so what, what Mr. Decker's saying is 50 that they're going to charge a fee for. Correct. Okay. Which, you know, depending on their venue or on the performer, they may charge for four guys in a week if they're all worth big money and then not charge for anybody at the rest of the, you know, I mean, that's that's the app the up the applicant. I mean, I think Mr. Decker's thought process is, is uh, from what I've heard over the past hour and a half is he doesn't want it turning into a concert venue. Right. Now, if they're a brewery and they're going to have you know someone excellent and local like John Corbett come over there and sing, they might they're not going to charge. They may they, you know they pay him. They're not going to. They're not going to charge. You, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and but you know, some people I'd pay to see John Corbett, you know, or TJ and the Peepers. We have them out back here; they're excellent. But you know, they they want you know, maybe on a Wednesday night people to to come in there. I don't. That's up to the, to the applicant. But what you're looking for is a limitation on fifty paid concerts, where you know, like the applicant presented that you know they sell out in three seconds or something like that. Oh yeah, um, that's what you're looking for. Yeah. That answer is that. Well, I was just my question was, is that going to be enough? That's what I'm asking. I was trying to figure out why. I guess Dave asked the same question. How do we come up with that number? Well, you, could, you could put it up a little higher if you want. I just don't I, want it to be uh, 365. No, I know, I know that, but we want to be fair to them. I mean, they they got a business to run, and I don't want to come up and say, well, gee, you know, you can't do this, you know. 
I would. I mean, it may be a ridiculous. Let's 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 get let's yeah, just, one to... second. Let's go in order. Let's just. We're, we're only talking about it. Yeah. Is anybody against the condition of keeping the permit with the ownership group? Yeah. We can take a vote. Yeah. All right, we'll take a vote. Yeah. Alex, or a poll, right? Or a poll vote? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Vote. yes. 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 Okay, so there's a majority that wants that condition. The applicants already said that they're fine with that condition. So now we're on to Mr. Decker's request of number of outdoor ticketed paid events. It's more comfortable with a large number. I'm not going to object as long as it's not 365. It doesn't matter to me. It's not a, it's, I understand where you're coming from, and I, I, I hear you. Yeah, less than 365, but I think they understand that. That's yeah, I mean, again, I'm going to go back to the, the, the let, let them lead, show us what they have in yeah. mind, and we can assess it in a year. Um, and if, you know, if, if they're bad business people, that's on them, right? And if they, if they ruin the, the situation, but we talk in Deerfield all the time about cultivating a better business community, right? We want to appreciate the, the creativity and the, and the, you know, energy that these people are bringing. We want to trust that this is a positive for the community. We don't know. Let them, who knows, show us. And if we come around and say, okay, last year you did 197 concerts and we had 197 complaining days. That doesn't work for us. Well, that would be Mr. outside Chair? of our per Yes, Ms. Gannett. So I was, it wasn't seven, it was actually eight o'clock that uh, attorney Costa has to leave. So he's here for another 10 minutes. Well, and has to, all right, so I think we're getting there. I think we're getting okay. there. Okay. So well, you're right, but, but, but we as a town can review it. And as you said, we have other boards who are invested in this process and who will be reviewing it. Um, I don't know if they renew the permit each year. Does it then come to us subject to our... No, the only thing that will come back to us is if, if we, if a change, change of use, uh, change of ownership group, if that we vote that condition, or they decide to go forward with phase three. Or if they want more days. Or if we, or if we give them 75 days, they could come back and ask for an amendment on that part. Or you can ask for an amendment to your special permit. In generally on, on anything, they could ask for an amendment, not just on this. So um, that's that. So I think so. We, so we would re retain some um, leverage, some some authority, if they come next year to the select board and say, how did it all go? We're not happy with the limit of 550 or 100 or 150 concerts a year. We want, then they'd have to come back to us. No, to change no. So this is, <clears throat> this is our shot for everything that they're asking for tonight. After that, we rely on the, on the other licensing authority in, in regards to this. Also, our, although we have the authority to put this on, we have to, as Mr. Costa said before, we have to put it within our criteria under 5320, or we have to say if we are conditioning it and the applicant doesn't agree or either way, we have to be able to say it's a detriment to the community because the difference between them having the ability to have concerts on more days versus our days, and this is why we have to say that there's traffic problems, that there's noise problems, and the applicant, in my opinion, has demonstrated with the 500-person limit that they're not going to be a detriment. So for me, I'm not going to be, and I know what Mr. Decker is trying to, to get at, and I agree with him, but I don't think that us by limiting the number of paid outdoor events versus unpaid, because they can still have 500 people there for free, would be a detriment. So I am not in favor of that because I don't think we have the the we have the authority to make that condition if the applicant wanted to agree to it. But I don't think that that falls specifically under our pre previewer saying where if you look at this and say 50 concerts are fine, but 51 is a problem. How do you say? You know what I mean? I totally do. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, no, I got you. 
And yeah. we're also, you know, um, looking at a, a, a group that did all these decibel measurements. They're well within the, the, the recommended means. And it, it, it's not good um, internal town politics to uh, go all across and, and, and uh, you know, um, uh, uh, basically cancel out what the select board has already done with good reason. And, 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 and as Carolyn uh, said earlier, and you were referring to, the paid aspect of it means it's better to be tracked and there's more accountability to it. Um, uh, I, I really um, uh, don't want to put up this board in a position of um, making a, a rule that pushes back against right. what, what the select board has already said. Right. When, when, you know, they're, they're uh, taking into account a lot of these factors. We have uh, the neighborhood commitment, and, and it seems that they're satisfactorily, um, you know, meeting that concern, which is our purview. So I have a hard time uh, as you're saying, taking a random number and telling them that that's community limit. Right. So I think we have a consensus that we don't have enough votes to add that condition because you're you, – okay. Just to let you know, if we don't have a number there, I don't intend to support the whole proposal. Okay. Now, that's your pur purview, Mr. Decker. Moving on to the time that they can have outdoor performances, that's blanketed, and we, I think that if board members want to restrict the time based on our community that, you know, I think we have a valid argument there that we could say that most people go to sleep. There's not, and this could go either way. There's vet clinic is 24-7, heart, heart is 24-7, that's not, if we wanted to restrict how late in the night they play outside, I think that is, Regardless of paid concerts or not paid concerts, I think that that has a little bit more mustard. If muster, not mustard, sorry, that the board we we can we can back that up. But that's that's my thought on it. Mr. Chair, Ms. Gannett, may I uh, make a suggestion? Of course. So I would suggest that if there was um, to, for phase two, if there was any substantial change to the application that they need to come back to the board. Well, okay. From what they have put into phase two before phase three. So if something happens in the meantime, it's just a condition for phase two. Um, okay. I'm fine with that. I don't, I thought that they would be operating outside of their special permit if they did something different, but I think we can we can add that to a condition. Their lawyers nodding and said that he doesn't have an issue with that. Mm -hmm. And I would also think that it would be difficult to put a, and to a number on the number, you know, a, in the special permit for as far as concerts because this is something that carries forward. It's not you know, they would have to come back to the board with a new application to change that. And they may not even have 50 paid ticketed concerts a year, but they may have more. I, I hear you. Um, um, it, Mr. Bur Mr. Sadat. Yes. Um, well, if, if they're going to be paid for, then we can also look at the other side that you can, they could run concerts that are free. And if you're running free concerts, then knowing the way people are, the more free concerts you have, the more people you have show up. And it's all about turnover of people. I'm no expert in financial issues, but I think you want to have so many people show up. So is it a detriment? To limit the number of paid concerts? Well, yeah, it is, but it also is a benefit that they have to run some free concerts to bring people in for their products. So it's a wash, I guess. I, I think it's arbitrary to put a number on it. I mean, and, and you know, and we can vote on it. I, and, you know, I just, I get where Mr. Decker's coming from, but I don't think it's going to make a difference on how many concerts they actually have. Correct. Right. 
I mean, that's just a guess, but you got 500 people on site. I mean, that's that's the max, whether it's paid for or it's free, it's 500. Plus the staff. Plus the staff. Seems like it's mixed. I'm not. I'm not for putting a number on it. I, I, I would, you know, it, it, it seems to me that that um, would a three-two vote uh, be acceptable, or it has to be four to one. Or uh, for a condition, I believe. Well, it, for a condition, I believe it has to be um, majority for a condition. Yes, I think it has to be four. Four for a condition. Special permit has to be granted, subject to all the conditions of approval. But so it's good. Top four here for. Yeah, one minute, or he's no longer here. <laughs> well, sorry, we're on our own. No, so um, I, I, you know, I think if, if I could just clarify again, I'm sorry if this is something we already covered. If we put a special condition on, um, uh, does that stay into perpetuity with this permit? Yes. yes. So um, Bob says he's not going to vote without a number attached to it. Bernie leans towards a number. Um, maybe some middle ground is let's uh, pick a generous number. Let's how about half the you know 180 half the year. 182 is half of 365. I, I don't know that that's going to limit them. You know, uh, I, I suppose they if they if they were bursting at the seams and concerts were everybody's favorite activity in this town and they wanted to come back for a brand new special permit to raise that number, it seems unlikely, but. You know, I want to work with you too, and I, I want to have you win. I propose a communication on the Sure. So we understand completely. No three. There won't be concerts. We had paid concerts 365 days a year. So the applicant would be acceptable. Would would, would accept uh, less than 180. We don't we don't anticipate we'd have 180 concerts in a year. Paid concerts again, live music. So if it would be acceptable to the board, even though the entertainment the entertainment license goes to 11 p.m. Realistically, Austin concerts would not occur until 11 p.m. They would occur, you know, and before 11 p.m. So, would it be acceptable to the board as a condition of approval? Uh, 100 concerts a year, cease operations by 10:30 p.m. I can't speak for the board, but that sounds fine to me. I can go with that. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So. That works. So, yeah. well, all right. <laughs> that's all. That's both that's of them. A hundred concerts. It's not a hundred paid ticketed concerts. Well, no, to be clear, paid ticket no. concerts. All right. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm looking so, for a number. All right. So that's. Does someone want to make that? Uh, so, so we're gonna move. Yeah. One more. Um, so I know. Previously, um, members have mentioned standardized conditions. I know now may not be the best time to talk about it, but I think um, the transferable portion was one of the standardized conditions. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I had said something while Mr. Costa was still here. Um, oh, but but we, we, we don't have to work out the conditions now, right? That's, that's the game. We, we say we're going to approve it with conditions. Um, and Mr. Cox is going to help us to put those into the perfect language, even though we've already agreed on this, the gist of it. Well, it, we, here's the thing. This is what we can do. We can vote tonight, grant the permit. We can vote it with the condition that we um, allow legal counsel to work with the applicant's legal counsel to um, put in the conditions of the leadership ownership group and the number of outdoor ticketed events that they indicated that they are good with and that they're all over by 10.30 p.m. And that suffices my idea on, on sunset. Mm -hmm. um, but if board members want something different, we can do that. We can vote to allow the permit to be done administratively and then we come back and then sign it or if the members of the board want to schedule another meeting to vote it again and review it 
we can do that too. We have pretty good guidance in making sure. Just prepare to prepare the uh, draft decision. Uh, email it to have the office email it to us individually, so it's not coming from one board member to another and getting involved with the open meeting law. And if anybody's got any question, they should first with uh, with yourself or uh, send an email back to the office as to what language you want changed. That work? So what you're saying is that we can, we'll, that someone, a board member will make a motion to approve the special permit, including the two, the, the uh, two conditions that the applicant indicated that they are agreeable to. Mr. Costa and the applicant will finalize that draft and then we will sign it in the lobby or you want to have another meeting? I don't necessarily think we have to have another meeting. Okay, I don't, I, I don't necessarily I think- sure it's drafted that we get, somebody gets another set of eyes on it before it gets signed, that's all. Okay, uh, uh, so what you're saying is that you want Can I make a suggestion? Miss Gannett, for sure. Our guidance tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I suggest that the office drafts the decision. We share it with council to have a review. And if he's good with the way that it's worded, especially with the transfer of ownership, um, then we'll just tell you all and you can come in and sign it. A comment. Yes, Mr. Sadatsky. Um, why don't we do it like we've done in the past? We authorize you to sign it so we don't be chasing signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do, I believe we can do that. I believe Ms. Hancock does require the, the all members to sign the decision before she records it. Okay. Is that correct, Ms. Gannett? Yes. Okay. Because in the past, we have not done that. Okay. All right. If someone wants to make that motion, I'll entertain it. I'll, I'll give it a shot. You want to crank the ear? Nope. Oh, I, 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 I chicken scratch. No, Here, let me. I can, I can do this. I'm a teacher. Give me this. <laughs> okay. So uh, I move that uh, we approve the special permit for phase two for Treehouse Brewery um, with the conditions to be worked out among council to specify that the special permit stays with. Uh, Treehouse Company and their affiliates uh, and does not transfer with the property, um, that there is a limit of 100 outdoor ticketed paid events per year, and that events um, end by 10.30 p.m. Outdoor events end by 10.30 p.m. Uh, and that outdoor, thank you, I'll rephrase. Um, so um, the outdoor events, outdoor ticketed events will end by 10.30 p.m. Okay, someone want to second that? I do. Okay, seconded by Mr. Decker. Okay. Um, I... One more thing. Uh, yes. Does that give Attorney Costa latitude to put in some of the standardized conditions that... Oh, the standard conditions, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. That's. I just want to make sure specific conditions. We want to make sure that are included okay. in his standard conditions. We, I, I would. We don't have standard. Okay. We don't. I, I understand. Okay. If, we, we, if you do, I would say we, we, we get standard conditions, but that ship sails. The standard conditions thing is not. There, this application is. The Mr. Co uh, Mr. Potter's motion that has been seconded is approving the applicant's application as presented with two conditions. One, that they work out the, the wording to make sure that this application as approved stays with this ownership group. And secondly, that there is no more than 100 paid outdoor concerts per calendar year and they end by 10.30 p.m. And our office staff, Ms. Gannett and her team will facilitate that with the applicant. And then if there, I will review it as well as the chair and then members 
will be asked to sign the decision. And if there is a problem or if I see a problem, then we'll address it. Is there any reason that can't be done tomorrow? Well, we have okay. a, we have a timetable to <laughs> to write the decision, so um, it probably will not be done tomorrow. Well, because I, I I do realize that if people are looking forward to uh, vacations in September, et cetera. Correct. And I just want to make sure that we 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 will do it in a timely manner, Mr. Decker. Unfortunately, it probably will not be done tomorrow seeing how i've worked two 14 hour days this week already so okay all right let's go on so mr decker has uh written here i'm gonna uh you're gonna vote on this yes okay and then uh alex yes and dave mm -hmm. yeah okay and Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Stavirsky is not here. Absent. And I will, yes, in favor. Oh, wrote you on the long line. Uh, and I have a suggestion for the future that the board can vote to use a Adobe electronic signature. The planning board just made that decision. Um, well, let's so do that's one a, thing at a time. Here. I this know, I'm just saying that that's in the future. Just one more thing. I'm, I, I just want to give up control. No, that's not, I got forced into this. So, uh, all right, so the report has been recorded. And thank you. We look, wish you the best. Get your time. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you all. Maybe we'll see you again if you go on to phase three. We'll see you around time. Thank you. Okay. Right. Just go to see us around time. Not come up to phase three. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. So Welcome. now, any business that has not previously been come before the board on the agenda. Ms. Gannett, without 48 hours notice, wants us to be able to sign with an Adobe pen. <laughs> I will entertain a motion for that. So move. I vote no. Okay. Because I don't have that stuff. Well, I'll I don't think it's mandatory. It's yeah. a possibility. Okay. I mean, I know it's good for people, but. I think you're still able to use the pen. Yes, it's okay. it's that's, that's what I think. Yeah. I'm old school. It's, 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 this is both. Old. Oh, for both? Oh, okay. Both will be, yeah, it'll be right. The, uh, the blue pen's still available, Jen, but if in the event someone was out of town and wanted to Adobe pen. Oh, gotcha. They could offer it. All right. Yes. Anybody else? Agreed. Oh, was it, it was seconded? Not yet, no. I can't vote on that. Yeah, you can. We're, we're done with the public. I vote to second. I think it's great doing okay. that. I love it. Okay. Seconded. Now we'll have a vote on that or any further discussion. With that? I don't think it's necessary. Okay. It's nice to, it's nice to have the ability if somebody wants to, if they're out of town, call and ask somebody else to use the Adobe Pen. But I don't think as a matter of course we should do it. Right. But we're not eliminating the, the okay. blue ink. We're only making it an option. An option for so if you're on out. vacation then you would have the opportunity to use that. Ah, all right. Any other discussion before we vote? Okay. I'm gonna vote in favor of it. It's just, we'll make a special note that the pen and the paper are not going away. So if members need to sign that way, they're more than welcome to. David Potter, aye. Aye, okay. Allard, yes. Okay. Alex, yes, four. 
they only gave me one record the votes thing here. So Just should write I write that on the back? Yeah, write it on the back. All right. Plus Alex will have it in the minutes. Does a good job with the minutes. He sure does. Oh, there's, there's a mistake. We're going to have to skip over that. Bernie, you're a no on that? Mm. No on the... On the pen? No, I abstain. How's that? Abstain. Mm. Oh, that's fine. Jen's yes. A's yes. Oh. Mr. Decker? Okay. I like to see things from well, you still can. We still, you still get to see everything. You don't. It's electronic. It's just you don't have yeah, to be nothing present. Nothing will change for you. Okay. I didn't see any mail. Public hearings done. We had new business. What was the Adobe? All right. There's a mistake in the minutes, so I make a motion that we table the minutes until September. Second. Seconded. All those in favor of table in the minutes? Aye, aye, aye. We get the majority on that. Unanimous on that. I suppose. All right. Uh, and progress and procedures on ZBA paperwork filing. I believe that's on hold until we can sort out any public records law issues, right? Uh, actually, regardless of like what the status is, mm -hmm. Alex and I are going to plan to meet, publish it, so people can chime or log on if they so choose. Uh -huh. Alex and I can still continue to work on that. Okay. Um, so while the clarification so, is going on, we're still going to work on it. But we haven't done any updates or anything to it um, since our last presentation. Okay. All right. Um, so you want that on the – we'll keep that – we'll put yeah, that we'll on the September? September. Because, Alex, we're going to meet before then, right? I think okay. So. Uh, and uh, September meeting date. We're gonna go go back to the second Thursday as a regular. Okay. And what did you say, September 9th? That would be the second Thursday. I couldn't hear you. It's the 9th. Yep. Yeah. I don't have a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is 6 o'clock fine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Chairman? I've covered it all here, I believe. If anybody has anything else or if anybody wants anything put on the agenda for September, please let me know. Cameron, I move we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Jen, for your help with everything. Thank you. Have and a good thank night. Thanks, us. Alex, for your help with the right. systems there. <laughs> I'm going to sit where you're sitting next time. You like it better over here? No. Yeah.